Preparing to live stream the meeting. Uh, wait a minute. Vale, estamos vivos, ¿eh? Sí, a ver un segundo. Vale, estamos vivos, ¿eh? ¿Ah? Sí, a ver un segundo. Vale, estamos vivos, ¿eh? ¿Ah? Vale, estamos vivos, ¿eh? ¿Qué se lo dice esto? Ah. ¿Pongo pausa? Uh, Yo he puesto pausa. Eh, ¿Lo haces a través de Zoom, lo de poner pausa? No, en YouTube, porque me ha saltado ahora YouTube. Ah, New... te salto de YouTube. Ahora te mando el link que tengo. Mira, espera. En WhatsApp, en, en WhatsApp te he mandado el link al YouTube donde estamos vivos. Vale. Te ha parecido... No podemos cortar esta parte, ¿no? Que estoy sí, esto, se, esto se podrá cortar. Ya, ya, ya. <risas> sí, sí, sí. Sí, vale. A ver, uh, lo, lo que es extraño es que las otras veces me dejaba um, decidir cuándo cuando empezar la... Desde YouTube me dejaba decidir cuándo empezar la conexión. Mm, ¿Ah, sí? Sí, a ver... Bueno, puedo, aquí tengo en la barra arriba, on custom live streaming service. Hi, Claire. Uh, stop live stream, view stream on custom live streaming service, and copy streaming link. Hi, Claire, how are you? Hi. <laughs> Good, thanks. This is David, who is setting up the, um, the link to live stream on, on YouTube. So you'll be able to have the, the recording of the session and on YouTube, it will be there. Oh, well, great. Perfect. How are you doing? Feeling ready? <laughs> Is this the third time you've done it? Yeah, yeah. We had uh, the Porto Business School in Portugal on Wednesday, and we had EU Business School last week. So okay. yeah, it went very well. Um, I think that the the content is is relevant and reacting well to students. Yeah, I really I really loved the the content that you sent through. It looks really okay. good. I, really I did. I. I hit some slides at the Jeff section, so oh. I won't be as long, which is good. Perfect. Cool. David, sorry, is everything all right? I, I think it's better to leave it this way, maybe, and, and then I'll, I'll cut it. Yeah. So I've paused it at the moment. Ah, okay. Perfect. Yeah. Um, yeah. Espera, porque ahora no lo encuentro. <laughs> ah, no, está aquí, porque se abre yeah. con... Um, Did, did you, have you, has, has abierto el link que te mandé? Sí, se ve, sí, se ve el directo. Y se ve como post, ¿no? Ahora mismo es... Uh... Yo veo a mí así, una, una imagen así y todo así. Yo aún lo veo, lo veo en directo. Ah, vale. Vale. Wow, ok, entonces yo debería, mmm, yo voy a cerrarlo, ¿eh? porque si no ah, va a haber feedback. Vale. Pero tú lo tienes abierto, así que no pasa nada, ¿no? Ok. We, um, we sent reminders today and last week and the week before. Um, David, do we know how many people have signed up through the website? Uh, I didn't check it. Uh, I'll do it. Thanks. You, Rosanna, you opened it up to all the students, not just the entrepreneurship masters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We opened it up to all the students. <clears throat> yeah, because there's only six uh, digital entrepreneurship students. No, yeah. Um, I mean, it really, really depends with these things. Sometimes, uh, like it, it seems to Friday afternoons. Uh, sometimes work and then sometimes uh, there's not big big numbers but that's why the really good thing is the the YouTube thing because we then share it with the students so they can watch it afterwards um, if they couldn't be here um, but you won't have we won't have numbers like you would have at EU or anything like that because it said they're a much 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 bigger school <laughs> mm. we're, a, we're a smaller small organization but I, I do hope that they join they, they've uh, signed up 
Yeah, but I think the recording is a great part of it that they can, you know, re listen in whenever they have a chance. Exactly. More time. <clears throat> Absolutely. So everything is online at the moment for them. With, with no, COVID? We, we are no, no, no. We run hybrid classes. So we, we, the teachers are on campus. The students who are in Barcelona are, are on campus, and then we have remote learners connecting from all around the world. Um, into the classroom. So the teaching <laughs> is a hybrid classroom set up. So they're, they're teaching to the people in the class and also the ones kind of on Zoom. So okay. uh, learning experience for all of us. Um, but we managed to set it up, which was great for this uh, for this semester. And it saved us really, because so many students couldn't make it. Couldn't make of course, it. yeah. Yeah. Okay. If you want to, ah, this is what I'm going to do now. I'm going to make you co-host, Claire. Okay, you should receive a notification now. Ah, I think it's just done it, actually. Um, can you, I just double check you've got the share screen symbol, the green symbol at the bottom. Yeah, so I'll just share. Yeah, if you want to share now and, and have the front page ready. Because people will start joining in a, over the next few minutes, I guess. Can you see that, Abby? Yeah, perfect. Perfect. <clears throat> If you want to, um, Claire, if you want for the next few minutes to, to silence yourself and go and get a coffee or whatever, that's fine. We'll just wait for them to, to join. Okay, I might actually run to the bathroom. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> ¿Sabemos, Abby, cuántos hay? Uh, ahora es, ahora me, es un poquito más difícil porque no la, la, los estoy contando, uh, porque como ya llega automáticamente no lo, no lo contamos, pero son más o menos, uh, por lo que veo, unos 30. Ah, súper, súper. Espero que, que todos tengan... <risa>
Hello to everyone coming in. Hello. Hi, Benedetta. We'll, uh, we'll wait to five till five past three to let people join, okay? Hi, Antonella. Hello. Okay, Claire, I think let's just start. Um, and, you know, in these things, some people start joining throughout, but uh, we can't, we can't wait forever. Um, 
So uh, I'd like to welcome everyone to today's guest speaker session. Uh, thanks very much to Claire for running this for us. Uh, she's going to be uh, talking to us about changes in entrepreneurship during the COVID crisis and also is going to present the company that she, she works for, um, who are an example of, uh, of kind of innovative entrepreneurship. So uh, we are also streaming live to YouTube. Um, so hello to anyone who's watching this uh, after the event. Um, I'm going to hand straight over to you, Claire, uh, and let you get going. Hi, Rosanna. Um, thanks so much for inviting me to come on and talk to the students. Um, it's such a pleasure to be here and talk to you guys and share our story with you and also talk about this topic that I think will be really interesting for you and really relevant during these times. Um, so yeah, I'll kick off and hello to everybody who will be watching later as well. In terms of when you can see my screen, is it better for me to hide the participant box? Or can you not see that? No, that's fine. I think you could leave it like that. Okay. Okay. And um, so the topic of this um, presentation is changes in entrepreneurship during the crisis. Um, and also Jeff as an added value ecosystem. So the agenda for today is um, we will be sharing our Jeff story. So Jeff is a startup company that was founded in Spain in 2015. So I'm going to take you through the steps and the key milestones um, for that company to go from startup to international success. Um, the second part of the presentation will be about how crises uh, turn into opportunities for entrepreneurs. And we'll look back at what ha has happened previously in our history, what opportunities have arisen, what companies have been evolved from them, and what potentially can come out of COVID-19. Um, and then the third part of it is taking you through our value added ecosystem. So I'll just be sharing with you the business model that we have in Jeff, kind of what our company is all about and also a brief introduction into the four different uh, verticals that we have at Jeff. And then uh, finally, I will leave uh, space at the end of the session for any questions that you might have. Uh, so we'll have time to, to chat about them as well. So to kick it off, um, I'm gonna share with you the Jeff story. Um, so I think it's just really relevant to share this with you because it was founded by three guys who were in university, in the University of Leon in Spain. Um, and I just hope this gives some piece of, of inspiration. Um, you know, we see people who are studying in university, particularly those who are studying entrepreneurship, that you guys are the future for entrepreneurs. Um, and I hope this story inspires you and empowers you. Uh, to take that step if this is something that you're thinking that you might like to do post-graduation. And so it's a very good story. These are our three founders. Uh, so we have Ruben, Adrian and Aloy is our CEO on the right. Um, they founded the company in 2015 with a dream to revolutionize the laundry industry with a company called Mr. Jack Laundry. Um, so from there, they became one of the undisputed leaders in the laundry sector. And their aim is to continue supporting the well-being of all our users with all our specialities. So it's not just laundry anymore. While they launched with this vertical, we've now launched into three other verticals as well. <clears throat> so here, I just want to take you through some key milestones and steps that the company took over the past five years. And this has really helped them to become the international company that they are today. So as I said, in 2015, Jeff was born. Uh, thanks to the three uh, guys who founded the company. Aloy is our CEO, uh, Adrian is our chief technical officer, and Ruben is on my team, on the marketing team, looking after performance marketing, uh, which is very much around the digital side of things and generating leads um, online, etc. In 2016, we launched the subscription model under the laundry business. So this really um, set Mr. Jeff aside from the competition in the industry. It wasn't something that um, companies had before. The subscription model allows consumers to have a rolling subscription of their laundry. So every week their laundry will be picked up and delivered all via an app. Um, and this allowed our franchisees, so our partners who own a Mr. Jeff laundry, this allowed them to have guaranteed monthly orders and a monthly income from these subscription plans. And then in 2017, the franchise model starts. 
So, you know, a lot of you guys will know we um, franchises are a great way to expand internationally. So, for example, McDonald's or Starbucks, their business model is a franchise model as well. Um, and what that means is while we are um, a company and we are a brand, you can buy a shop from Mr. Jeff, and then that's your shop that you run and manage as the entrepreneur or owner of that shop. Um, and the way it works is you then pay a, a royalty fee to Jeff, um, but we take care of all of the global strategy, the marketing, um, your business model, everything is set up. We give you the keys to run your shop. So by starting this franchise model, it allowed Jeff to expand fairly rapidly um, internationally. So in 2017, this started with Mexico. So while the company was founded in Spain and we had our first store in Spain, through the franchise model, we started launching in Latin America with Mexico being the first one. And then in 2018, we've seen a huge expansion throughout that region across Latin America. And we're now in 20 uh, uh, countries uh, in 2018. But with, we, to this day, we still have our biggest presence in Latin America. It's one of the regions that definitely works the best for us. And then in 2019, Jeff, the super app of well-being of services is very real. Um, so we have an app, all our verticals, you can book your service through the app online, whether it's your laundry, whether it's your gym, everything is done through the app, including the management of the business. So if you are a partner and a franchise owner of Jeff, all of your business can be managed through this app, including your customers signing up to your business through that as well. So Beauty Jeff and Fit Jeff were launched last year in 2019. Um, and two agreements were really key for us. One being an agreement with Oh My Cut in Spain. And um, those of you who are living in Spain or are, are from Spain, you'll know those hairdressers called Oh My Cut. They're, they're, there's a lot of them here in Valencia and throughout the rest of Spain. So we acquired them. So by making a partnership with Oh My Cut, oh My Cut we were able to get a wealth of knowledge and experience from their owners. Um, to create the business uh, or to create the Beauty Jeff vertical. And the other vertical that was launched in 2019 was Fit Jeff. And again, we partnered with Entrenarme, which were a Spanish uh, fitness startup company in Spain that were doing really well. So by joining forces with them, we were able to share expertise and knowledge for that industry as well. And then in 2019, so we got off to a great start here in Jeff this year. Um, and we launched in Asia, which was, you know, a big uh, milestone for us. Um, and the team also grew to more than 600 colleagues. And we're all uh, colleagues from more than 25 countries. So we're a very international team here with the headquarters based in Valencia. And then in August, so very recently, we launched our fourth vertical, which is Relax Jeff. And these are our um, massage centers. So they're just some of the key steps that helped Jeff grow uh, from founding in 2015 to where we are now with global uh, presence in 2020. So I'm just gonna take you through now some fast facts just so you can learn more about the company. Uh, we're present in 40 markets now across four continents. We have more than 2000 hubs all around the world. So a hub is a store, whether it be the laundry, the beauty, the fit or the relax. So we have 2000 in total. We have more than 1 million users are living what we're calling the good, good life. So our promise in Jeff is that we want to offer our customers the good, good life so that everything they need for their daily life, uh, you're able to acquire through the Jeff app. We have hundreds of talented people, as I said, from more than 25 countries around the world working here at Jeff. Uh, we have created 3,500 indirect jobs or more than that now. Um, and as I said, we have the, the four verticals. Um, so I guess to introduce myself properly, um, my name is Claire. Um, I look after marketing for the EMEA region at Jeff. So that's Europe, the Middle East and Africa. And that's our latest region that we've launched into and one that's growing uh, very rapidly for us. Um, at the moment, we're working on launches in the Czech Republic, in Bulgaria and uh, Hungary. So it's a very exciting time for this region. Um, and I'm really enjoying it. I joined Jeff in November, so I'm over a year in the company. And yeah, it's been a great experience working in a startup. Previously, I, I only worked in multinational companies. So 
it's it's nice to, to see what both different worlds are like to work in. Um, I'm Irish, I come from Dublin and I was working in uh, Mars when I was in Dublin for uh, three years as brand manager there. And then I moved to Spain to work with Schweppes in Madrid. So I was there uh, before Jeff and then I joined, joined Jeff. And um, so yeah, it's been a great experience moving from the FMCG industry into the tech industry. Um, it's, it's, it's been great. So the next part of our presentation that I wanna talk you through is how crises uh, create opportunities for entrepreneurs. So um, we're gonna talk about how COVID-19 has been a game changer in world crises and has really accelerated. Um, but if we look back in, in history and if we look back at what we've learned from previous crises in the world, um, we can see that since 1974, we've experienced eight crises. Whereas between 1900 and 1973, there were only four crises. And in the 19th century, only six. So what we're learning and what we're seeing as we look back in time is that the frequency of uh, global crises is increasing and they're getting more contagious globally. So where has this brought us to or where are we now? So right now with COVID-19, uh, we're in a period of secular stagnation. Um, and what that means is, is that unemployment is increasing and our economic uh, growth is decreasing. And this is a major effect on, the, on, on, on everybody globally. Uh, and what we're seeing with the crises like COVID-19 is that it brings about a lot of distrust uh, in the institutions, such as in the IMF, in, within the EU and within the state. Uh, it brings about a lot of dis, uh, dissatisfaction with the economic system and also major dissatisfaction with uh, financial markets. Um, and what we've seen uh, previously is that these recessions and crises bring about cycles of austerity. And we've seen that in the 1929 uh, collapse of the financial markets. Uh, we've seen it with the Second World War. And now with the aging population, we're seeing it again. And what we would also say is that we're living uh, in a world where economic pan pandemics are more prevalent than health pandemics. Um, and I guess, you know, to bring this back to entrepreneurship and into the tech, tech industry and the tech world, we, we started to look at what impact does technology have during times of crisis, um, such as what we're living now. So historically, what we would have seen is that productivity employment and average income were all very much associated. Whereas now, if we look at these two companies, for example, Kodak would have had to employ 145,000 employees uh, for their business to be a success and to achieve everything that they achieved. Whereas today, Instagram are only employing 4.6,000 employees and having a much greater impact and reaching many more millions of people. So currently, productivity is not necessarily associated with employment and income, and the workforce isn't as, as key as it would have been in the past. So where does that bring us to? Well, if we think about it, we're in a period of stagnation, plus the impact that technology is having during these times is, is equaling unemployment. And what we're seeing is that COVID-19 has accelerated this cycle. So in the past, uh, in the US, with a 2% decrease in GDP, that meant that unemployment increased by only 1%. This year, GDP is expected to fall by 6.5% in the US, which therefore should lead to a 3.25% increase in unemployment. However, what we're seeing is a huge acceleration and unemployment has actually reached a record high of 14.7%, which is over 20 million people. So it's accelerated greatly with the COVID-19 pandemic and our current economic models aren't capable of explaining this behavior. And according to Oakham's law, each market has a very different effect. So each country correlates differently according to its economic uh, structure. So it's very different whether it's a developing country, a developed country, um, et cetera. So, are we facing an end of the current economic system? So you might think with the population growth that we're seeing at the moment, the effect of digitalization on our world economy and the lack of qualified entrepreneurs that we're facing a system crisis. 
And also there is a shortage of entrepreneurs. So there's a need for more businesses and more trained entrepreneurs in our world today. And if we look at what COVID-19, where the impact has been on the consumer and on the different industries, uh, what dangers um, and what opportunities has it created? Because when we look at this, what I'll talk about next is how in previous crises, companies have seen where the opportunities are, where the growth is, where the change in consumer behavior has happened, and they have taken advantage of that and been able to create a new company based on this change in behavior. Um, so for example, we're seeing people are buying less clothes uh, and high investments, are uh, people aren't investing in high investment elements such as electronics, furniture, real estate, et cetera. So that's, that is declining. Whereas people are saving more, signing up to subscriptions more, using contactless payments and supporting the community. In terms of, uh, of the financial impact that this is having, COVID-19, so you could look at that and think, okay, where is the opportunity for me? You know, is my company providing an opportunity to do contactless payments or not? This is what's important now. And this is the change in consumer behavior that I need to act upon. In terms of the use of technology, if you look at what we're doing right now, this is an online event, which maybe before COVID-19 would have been in person. So the increase in teleconferences is happening and um, online education is increasing. The use of social media and broadband connections. Um, and then in terms of entertainment, you kind of have a, a dual uh, impact here. While there's an increase in family meetings and video streaming on TV, uh, the likes of holidays abroad or entertainment outside the home, such as going to a play or the theater, they're decreasing. In terms of work, many people are working from home more. Our company at Jeff is now 100% remote working. So we, we can be based from anywhere in the world and we're not obliged to, to be in an office in a certain place anymore. Um, there's more temporary work contracts happening as well due to the uncertainty of things with COVID-19. Um, in terms of transport, so people don't have to, to live close to work and commute a half an hour uh, into the town centre or the city centre where their office is. That's not necessary if you're working from home, you can be based from anywhere. Uh, so therefore car purchases are decreasing, they're not as necessary anymore. And then if we look at, at the consumer's diet, eating out has decreased. Of course, there's a lot of restrictions around. Many restaurants have closed down um, and people are focusing more on good diet and fresh food uh, to be eating at home. Um, and health is increasing in terms of people focusing on their physical and mental health and also taking more vitamins and trying to get in that uh, outdoor exercise to keep them sane. So I guess if we look back on the latest crisis, which would have been back in 2008, which I'm sure we all remember, um, and we look at what companies or what opportunities arose from that crisis. And there was the likes of WhatsApp was created post the 20, 2008 crisis, Uber, Airbnb, and Instagram. It's hard to believe that these four companies didn't exist before then, but that is when they were created um, and they were born out of that crisis. So they've seen an opportunity or change in consumer behavior and came up with a great idea um, and launched a company. So at Jeff, we're, we're seeing that there's an opportunity to create um, an ecosystem of entrepreneurship of added value. So what we want to do, and we're changing our offering, we want to make entrepreneurship more accessible and we want it to have a bigger impact. Um, we were looking at the entrepreneurship uh, GEM report of 2018. And what we've seen is that there are about 300 million people trying to start about 150 million businesses. A third of these will work out, so about 50 million companies are born each year, or 137,000 businesses per day. So that's a hell of a lot. And we feel that we have a responsibility to give entrepreneurs the best solutions and give them everything that they need uh, to be a success. So that's, I guess, where this presentation moves in to our company and to Jeff and how we are offering a value added ecosystem in these four industries that we have launched. So I guess to tell you more about Jeff, Jeff is a platform of wellbeing services. So our goal is to become the Amazon of services. We're a technological company who will revolutionize the world of franchises. And the way we did that was by combining the online world, so with our app, with the offline world, which is the physical store, the franchisee. 
So this app is an app where our customers can enjoy most of their demanded services uh, on a daily basis, all from their sofa or wherever they need it from. So the idea is that we make their life easier in just a few clicks. And this is an example here um, of our app. So we offer day-to-day -day services in a refreshing and efficient way. Um, our, our vision is to promote the good, good life. So each of our franchisees have proven know-how and optimized value proposition and a very clear identity and differential offer. So these are our four verticals. Um, and what we do is we create a business in a box and give that to the franchisee so that they have everything that they need to create their business and ensure that it is a success. So the first one that was launched was Mr. Jeff, the laundry business. And the differential aspect here is we deliver the laundry services where, wherever you need it. So you can book your laundry to be picked up and delivered. You can do that through the app and it can be picked up at your home and delivered in 24 hours to your workplace, for example. The next one is Beauty Jeff, where we have launched affordable salons. And the idea is that these are gonna be all within proximity to wherever you are living. So that's the goal. Um, and again, we gained 12 years of experience in the sector by partnering up with Oh My Cut, who had a very efficient model uh, with a turn system, which I'll take you through when we look at that vertical in more detail. The third vertical then is Fit Jeff. And these have launched now. We have a Fit Jeff here in Valencia and it's doing very well. Um, and the idea is to create a pleasant and fun place with all the most demanded classes, such as Pilates and yoga, um, all within, within reach of your home or of your, of your workplace. And then the fourth one is the Relax Jeff. So the idea here is to create uh, centers where you can get an affordable and quick massage um, near your home. And this is where we are present. So we've over 2000 franchises all over the world. Um, so over 2000 franchisees have put their trust in us. Um, we're in over 40 countries and we've over 2 million users. So we're very present, as I said previously, in Latin America, uh, also in Asia now, having launched at the beginning of the year. And then in Europe, we're growing pretty quick. Um, so we're opening new countries there nearly every month. So it's, it's going fast. And then in terms of our business model, so uh, this is Jeff Business in a Box. Um, so what we're doing here is developing a unique value proposition where technology connects the offline and the online world. Um, so everything that you need, all the integrated solutions, everything is here and designed to make the life easier for the franchisee or the entrepreneur. So they get the technology to run their business um, with the app, with their operations and management systems and payment systems all through the app all the know-how, so we provide all the training and we take them through step-by-step step, everything that they need to know. And we also take care of the brand from a global uh, strategic perspective. So the idea is that having a business was never so easy as it is with Jeff, that we give everything you need in a business in a box. So we've created a technological solution. So the way the app works is it controls the entire process. So from the beginning, it attracts more users to Jeff Services. So as we looked at what opportunities there are post COVID-19, we're seeing that the use of technology is, is rising, uh, the use of social media. So the use of online orders. So that's where the app is bringing in more customers because it's easier for them to book their laundry or to book their fitness class rather than waiting around or book their beauty treatment. Then we have the Jeff uh, web, which gives you everything in one place to manage your business. And um, the Jeff Academy, which provides the, the, you know, the training for, for everything you need to know to manage the business. It helps to reduce your costs and increase your profits. Everything, you know, it improves your administration management. We have Jeff drivers that we provide each of the franchisees to do the delivering of the laundry, et cetera. Um, and we have the Jeff suite, which allows you to collect useful and important information. So on the Jeff suite, we have all of the data about your customers that you will need to make informed and better decisions uh, based on those insights. And then in terms of the strategy, so we take care of the brand strategy in-house. We have about 40 people in marketing. 
Um, so we had the regional marketing managers where, where I sit. We had the brand team that are looking after the brand strategy and the global brand campaigns. We had the performance team, which are looking after um, the digital side of things um, and getting leads online, et cetera, and making sure our brand is present online. So this is just an example of some of the, some of the stuff that we do in terms of social media, um, in terms of launching a vertical, what that looks like. Um, we, we also do CRM, uh, so that's customer relationship management, uh, and this helps increase frequency, activation, um, and retention of, of our customers to each of the verticals. And then as you know, we're present in over 40 countries. So prior to COVID-19, we would have been on the streets of over 200 cities all over the world. Um, and here's just some examples of, for example, here on the left, uh, brand ambassadors. So when we launch in a new city or a new neighborhood, we have our brand ambassadors cycling around, getting the awareness out, handing out flyers, let them know about the business. Uh, we have a lot of sponsorships. So for example, we're partners with the Valencian football team. Um, and that's, that, that helps us to promote the brand and build credibility and brand awareness. Uh, we've done a lot of at-home advertising, metro advertising, uh, things like that. Um, and this is just an example of all the support and knowledge that you get and that you need if you're, if you're a partner of the Jeff uh, company. So one thing you get is a partner success manager. So that's a team um, that we have internally and each of them partner up with a franchisee to walk them through and guide them through all the aspects of setting up their business and running their business. So they're your kind of right-hand man that you have to help you with anything that you might need. Um, we've validated experts internally. So with people that have come from 20 years of experience in franchise business working with us or years of experience working in, in marketing, uh, in the laundry industry, et cetera. Um, we have operations managers which help uh, with the control and assistance for your business operations and uh, right down to, you know, the operations of your beauty salon, payment, all that kind of stuff. We have brand managers in-house, which are responsible for developing the brand on a global level. Online training, so we do live training, videos, all sorts of things to help build up the knowledge um, of our partners. Um, and it's a very quick, quick startup. So if you are to become a franchisee of Jeff, the... The, the number of days, it could be open within 45 days. So it's a very quick turnaround. So now I'm just gonna um, take you through a quick snapshot of each of the four verticals, just so you can see uh, what we're about. So Mr. Jeff, as you know by now, is the laundry vertical. And the idea is that we strive to simplify the complex complexity of a traditional laundry uh, service. So you know, when the guys wanted to, to launch this business, they looked at the laundry sector and they wanted to revolutionize it. So what that means is, you know, previously, um, the, you know, a dry cleaner or a laundry business would have been a very traditional model and traditional setup and would have been very much focused offline. So there'd be your local dry cleaners that's um, in your neighborhood, that's a store. So there wouldn't be very much in terms of a techno technology advancement incorporated with the business or you know innovation to make it a more modern business so the idea with mr jeff was to revolutionize that modernize it and really link technology up to make it presence online as well as offline so this is just to give you an idea of you know how to choose if you're looking to open your own business or purchase a franchise um which market to go into. So this gives an idea of why we chose this market. So first of all, it's a growing sector on a global level, the laundry industry. Um, and there's some interesting insights behind it as to why people use a laundrette or a dry cleaner. Um, so 78% of people think that doing laundry is the most hated household task. That's quite a large figure uh, to be a reason of why people don't wanna do that task. So that's one very good consumer insight. Um, there's been 34% growth in online orders on a global level. That's also quite big because our value add was bringing the laundry sector online. So to see that that was growing meant that there was a need for that. Um, and it's a huge market that's worth over 180 billion, which is absolutely massive. 
and we had a solution. So, you know, what made Jeff different or why were we able to be a success in this industry? Um, so they want, the customer wanted a service that the industry hasn't been able to provide and Jeff provided that. So that's why we were able to stand out from the crowd, stand out from the competitors and compete. Um, so we created an offer with a subscription model um, and the subscription model is what set us aside. It helps increase your recurrence. So you have money coming in on a monthly basis guaranteed. It's easier to control the order status uh, with the app. Um, customer service online through the app 24 seven. Uh, we have a very strong marketing strategy that includes coupons to drive people in. We offer a free trial, et cetera. And we also offer automatic payment management again through technology. And here's an example of what the store looks like. Um, we recently launched in Barcelona, uh, I think it was in June, um, and we teamed up with the, with the partner to create a video, which I'll show you in a second. But this is what the store looks like. We keep the brand very consistent uh, globally. So it has the same look, look and feel, the same layout, no matter if you're in a store in Barcelona, in Mexico, or in China, it all looks the exact same. Um, it's a very simple, clean, modern look and feel. And it's a very simple business model. So, you know, the customer places their order on the app, the laundry is picked up from wherever they wish, it's brought to the store, it's processed and then delivered back. So this is just a quick video I'd like to show you, um, which is about, this is our partner who bought a franchisee in, in Barcelona, uh, just to give you a little idea of what it looks like. Sorry guys, I'm just seeing you can't hear the video. Um, no worries, because there was there was subtitles, so I think we wouldn't have been able to catch that. Ah, well, what I can do is I can I can send it after. Okay, thanks. Okay, um, sorry about that guys, I'll send the video out so you can, you can watch it. The next uh, vertical that was launched is uh, Beauty Jeff. Um, and our aim here was to do the simple things in an exceptional way. Um, and again, we had many, a lot of expertise and that really helped by partnering with Oh My Cut. Um, so again, why this market? Why did we choose beauty to launch into after laundry? 71% um, of users in the market um, are loyal. Um, so if you think about where you might go for your beauty treatments or your hair treatments, you know, consumers like to keep going back to that same place for consistency so they don't have any surprises. Um, it's a huge market and it's growing. Um, so it's worth over 575 billion. It's a huge sector. Um, and there's a, a lot of occurrence in, in this business. People normally like to go to a salon at least twice a month. Um, so what we, what we offer is smart beauty, so quality services and affordable, no surprises, um, services near you. So the idea is that with the franchise model, we'll only be 15 minutes away. That's our goal where we'd like to get to. 
uh, there's a standardized uh, process. There's no difference between stylists. So it's a very simple model and digitalization makes it very easy to manage. So we have a turn system where you book uh, to come to the salon through the app and you can, you can see very clearly where there is availability. So in terms of what's different with this new turn innovative model versus the traditional model, so you'll have a higher attendance because you know, potentially it could just be a few minutes before that you've booked to come to the salon. So they'll come straight away, higher number of visits. Uh, so two services per number of visits versus only 1.4 in the traditional model. Um, sorry, and this one is about the visits. So 625 visits, you can have more people coming in if the booking is so live um, and easier for people to, to come in straight away. And in terms of what services does Jeff Beauty offer, they do the hairstyling, uh, color and treatments, and also a nail bar in each store. And this is what they look like. So these are very popular in Latin America, um, but they're also launching in EMEA and Asia as well. <clears throat> and our third vertical is Fit Jeff. So our mission here is that we want people to have an active and healthy life and change the way people exercise. And um, so we want to become the biggest fitness club in the world um, and to improve the experience of getting fit um, through our Fit Jeff model. So why this market? Again, this is a huge market that's growing. If you look at where it was in 2013 at 138 million, in 2018, it grew to 183 million almost. So it's a growing sector um, that's absolutely massive. And in terms of the, the trends, so the Fit Jeff is a boutique gym. And the, trend, the reason why we set up this model is due to the trends and insights that we've seen. So there's 42% of the US fitness market um, and the growth of, of boutiques has been 100%, sorry, 42% of the US fitness market are boutique gyms, and they have seen 100% customer increase, and 75 increase in revenue is what we've seen in Spain in 2018. Uh, these boutique gyms are more social and friendly, so it can be very intimidating to go into one of the massive chain traditional gyms where there's so many machines that people may not know how to use, um, and they're so huge, it's very difficult to get to know people. So the idea is that these are more community gyms um, and easier to get to know people and use them for a social aspect as well as for your fitness reasons. Um, high specialization. So again, everything's focused on the user experience and you'll see that from the images I will show you. Um, and it's about between 70 to $100 monthly on average uh, for limited classes. So the difference between the Jeff uh, model versus the traditional model is it's more fun, it's social, it's smaller and personalized. Um, the idea is that we're creating an oasis in a busy city, in a busy city, and higher recurrence, and it's only 50k investment versus probably over 300 in the traditional uh, gym franchise model. And this is what they look like. So the Fit Jeff offers yoga, Pilates, and uh, functional classes and hit classes. Um, and it's a very nice, calming, uh, spacious environment. Um, and it's a very easy model. So the user signs up to a monthly plan or attends a, a first free class or even just one class booked through the app. Uh, they reserve the class that suits them best. They come to the center um, and they have the opportunity to present, participate in other events that the, that the gym will organize as well. And then guys, this is our final uh, vertical. It's our Relax Jeff. So this launched in August in Mexico. Um, and the mission here is to make massage services accessible and to change the way people react, uh, relax. So why this market, again, between 2017 and 2022, there will be 36% growth in the sector in US dollars. Um, and everybody wants uh, to be relaxed. But why are they not used that often? So what we've seen from the research that was conducted is that there were very long massage sessions that people may not have had time for, very high prices. So, you know, a lot of the salons that were available would have been in high, uh, high class chain, hotel chains, uh, spas that are further from the city and very premium. Uh, there could have been poor quality or hygiene. People have a fear of injury. Um, again, the proximity that they're very far from their workplace or home. Um, and people were not fully aware of the great impact that a massage can have on your overall health. Um, so with the Jeff model, we were able to eliminate those fears 
Um, sixty percent of people who consume spa services they actually prefer to be shorter and to be less than one hour. Um, and seventy five percent of millennials say they don't have enough time to do what they want. So this helped us structure our business, and we provided twenty minute and thirty minute massages. Um, as people wanted to come on their lunch break, for example, and get their massage in quickly before heading back to work or with their other day-to-day -day errands. Um, so people will use it more, the, the better it suits to their daily lifestyle. And again, there's a turn system, which makes it all the more quicker that they can request the turn to come to the center. They don't have to wait around. Everything is done through the app and they can also cancel through the app as well. And this is what these uh, massage centers look like. They're very calming, uh, tranquil centers. Um, and the one that's launched in Mexico, it's doing very well. So that's everything, guys. That's the, the presentation. And um, if you're really interested in what I presented, you can find out more on our website at uh, franquicias at mrjeffapp.com. You can also check out our LinkedIn page and our Twitter page as well. But I'm here if you have any questions that you'd like to, to ask me, uh, feel free. Thank you very much, Claire. Okay, guys, do any of you have any questions? Okay. No questions. Okay, uh, in that case, uh, I would like to say again, oh, sorry, that's my, uh, my email. Uh, I would like to say again a big thank you to Claire for uh, speaking us to, to us today to present for presenting the, the company, which is really interesting, a really interesting model uh, that I'm sure can, can serve as inspiration for, for our students. And also uh, the really interesting topic, uh, which is very relevant and current to today. Uh, so if we have no questions, uh, I think we'll, we'll, we'll finish here. Uh, but if you do, guys, if you do have a, a question later on, or if you're watching this on YouTube uh, and you have a question, send that over to me via email and I can put those questions to Claire and I'm sure she'll be happy to answer them. Thanks, Rosanna. Thanks okay. everybody for connecting and joining in on a Friday afternoon. Really appreciate it. And it was lovely to talk to you all. Have a good weekend. Thanks very much. Bye-bye. Thanks, guys. Bye.